and welcome and thank you for clicking on this video. I want to talk about the relaunched historic environment viewer that was relaunched about two weeks ago by the Department of I never get this straight. Department of Heritage Housing and Electoral Def Reform, even though on the website it has a different name, but it's those topics. The Department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage. And it became necessary for them to relaunch their historic environment for about two weeks ago, um, after it had been offline for three weeks. Um, I'm not sure I can say why they had to relaunch it. I'm not sure how public that information is, um, but it became necessary anyway. And after three weeks, it was up and running again on a new website, which is one of the issues I had with that. There are some new features on it that I will talk about. And there are also still some technical issues. I know they're working on it. So this is, you know, it's a work in progress and um, some of the issues might be resolved by the time you watch this video, depending on how quickly after I record and upload this, you watch it. So let's have a look at the new Historic Environment Viewer. The old address where you could find it online was maps.archaeology.ie slash historic environment, which was something you could remember if you wanted to. The new address uh, is much, much longer and impossible to remember, but they have set up a redirect now. So if you still have that in your bookmarks, you sh should still get to the new map. So that's good. That took them a couple of days now. Um, but to start with the positive things, the thing that I'm most excited about is that it now understands GPS, which is so good. Um, if you're familiar with the work of the National Monument Service, they love their uh, Irish transverse marketer. And um, I remember that when I was working for a project for the Kilkenny Archaeological Society about their graveyard transcriptions, they have transcriptions of graveyard stones or grave stones um, in County Kilkenny, and we were preparing files of that and it needed coordinates on it so you would find the graveyards which are all mapped on OpenStreetMap of course but anyway and they insisted on using Irish Transverse Mercator because they thought that would be more precise which isn't true but I will show you an example of why they think it's not as precise as the ITM later on. Um, but but um, let's say you you're mapping on OpenStreetMap or you're even on Google, um, you're looking on Google and you think you've discovered a ring fort or something or some a field system or whatever. Before that, and every other map works with GPS. So you got your GPS off Google Maps or OpenStreetMap or wherever, and you couldn't search for it on the historic environment viewer before because all they had was ITM, so you had to convert it and then use the ITM to use it. Or you had to find out which townland it was in, which is not very easy on Google Maps because they don't have townland boundaries. Um, it is possible on OpenStreetMap, of course, because we do have the townland boundaries. And then you would have to search for the townland and hope you find the right one because, of course, there are townland names that have dozens of occurrences in Ireland. And then you still might not find the right location on the Historic Environment Viewer. We'll get to that. Um, but now you have GPS and it's, it makes work so much easier if you're trying to use it for that purpose. So that is great. And thank you, thank you, thank you for finally um, introducing GPS into the Historic Environment Viewer. What they've also done, and you can see that already, and I think they didn't have that before, is the county boundaries. I don't like how strong they are, but at least they have them now. And also they have townland boundaries now. You have to zoom in a little more to see them. Oh, there they are. So you have to zoom in to a certain zoom level and then the townland boundaries are there in green, which should make it easier to find um, certain locations. And it will also help the people working in the National Monument Service to attribute sites to the right townland. So at times they had put the, if you click on a red dot, which is a, is part of the sites and monuments records, it will give you the townland here in all caps. And sometimes they got that wrong because they didn't have the townland boundaries on their, 
on this map genie, what they now call map genie, um, layer before. Um, they would have had to switch into one of the older Ordnance Survey maps that has the townland boundaries. Um, what's also great now, they have added a couple more aerial imagery layers here. I think the last one, this was the last one they had. Yeah, that looks very familiar. Um, what we call Esri Clarity on OpenStreetMap. So they have a newer one here, which is great if you want to compare two layers. Um, you know, if you, th if you think that there is a, like a ring fort or something on one of the layers um, and you're not quite sure if it's maybe tractor marks or something, and you can compare it to a more recent layer. So that's also very good. Uh, they've also added the discovery map as a layer. I'm not quite sure why that would be useful. I, I have no use for it, but I mean, maybe other people have. Um, and they have it in this layer which you might know from the, the paper maps. And this one here, um, I'm not entirely sure what the difference is. Maybe it's a different um, different year or something because this one says ITM, but they all have the same grids, so I'm not sure. Um, and then we have the, the four old Ordnance Survey map layers that we had before. Um, I thought there was also an Irish language version, but maybe that was on GeoHive, because while I was trying to do my work, um, that I'm not getting paid for, but it still work, um, I had to go to GeoHive then to look at old maps, because this wasn't available. Um, what they've also done is they've linked the rec viewer up here at the top. So we'll go into that. It opens a new map. And it was more difficult to find beforehand. So it's it's great that they've linked that now. Just to show you, which is of course what I had to search first, is that the Tresnes is now on the rec viewer, which is the ship that I or the ship that I reported to the National Monument Service. And there's a lot more information there that I, that I even found out. So that's worth checking out if you are interested in that, if you want to follow up on that video. Tresnes is now mapped. And now into the issues I have with the newly launched Historic Environment Viewer. And by the way, it says here interim version at the top. They should probably have called it a beta version. But, um, so it is an interim version. They're, they are working on resolving issues. And I'm collecting some of the issues and I'm going to send them an email uh, in about two weeks time, probably. If you have any issues that you come across, you can comment uh, down below under the video and I can put that into my email as well. Don't report to me if there are, if there's wrong information on the map. I know that's there and they know that's the case. Um, you can report that to them directly, especially with the NIAH um, entries. Okay, so there are, there's no certain order in, in, in the issues that I'm going to list. Um, it's not like most important at the top or anything like that. It's just what occurred to me. So there are a lot of missing entries. For example, uh, Kelts and County Kilkenny that you might be familiar with. Uh, the Kells Priory, especially, it's a massive, it's the largest um, monastic site still, I think, in Ireland. And there is a church here, which you can't tell because they didn't label it. And then there's a ladies' chapel here, and I think the, um, what's it called? The chapter house is here, and then you have the cloister here and other buildings and more tower houses, castles all along here, and I'm fairly sure that all these parts had red dots before. They all had entries in the sites and monuments records, and they're all gone now. Um, I have a suspicion why that is, because there, there are similar issues with the NIAH entries, and 
I know why they are there, but I'm not sure I can say why, because I don't know if that information was given to me to spread around or if that was just in confidence. Um, but they are working on it. But if you click on this one here, uh, right in the center of the cloister, you see that there are, this is one of 34 entries, which I find a little bit annoying that you have to click through 34 entries. Um, and none of them is the church. And there's also an effigy here that I'm sure probably had, well, I'm sure probably that's not very good uh, English, but that should have its own red dot and it should be where that thing is. Because if you take this out on your phone, when you're in Kells and you want to look at stuff that you see and you want to find it on the map, you might want to have the red dot where the thing is and not click to 34 entries which is not any easier on your phone. Uh, but there we go. So there are missing entries. There are also duplicate entries, just to make it more fun. Um, again, looking at Martello Towers, there's one somewhere here. The Eye of Ireland. I'm not super familiar with County Dublin, but I think it's this island. Yeah, so this is the island, it's called Ireland's Eye, and there's supposedly a Martello Tower here at this blue dot. It wasn't that one with the duplicate entry. Can't remember which one it was. But anyway, it's in the wrong location, because if you look here, it's in the middle of the sea. There is certainly not a Martello Tower in the middle of the sea. Um, it is actually up here, where it also says Martello Tower, but that's the sites and monuments records. And that's actually where it is. You can actually see it there fairly clearly. Um, there's a promontory fort and the Martello Tower. Some of the Martello Towers, if you're interested in them, have a blue dot and a red dot, and some only have one of them. And there are some other issues with Martello Towers. Um, I can't remember now which one was duplicate. Maybe it was the one in Rush which is also in the wrong location. Anyway, sometimes you have a blue dot and you click on it and it's actually two entries. I won't find the right one now. And just like with the... This is also in the wrong location. Um, Just like with the... 1 of 34, you would have 1 of 2, but then you have the same entry twice. So this is the Thatch Cottage, which is, as you can see, slightly farther north. You can see that this is a thatched roof, and this is certainly not a thatched roof. Um, then there are also quite a few missing attachments. So if you click on one of the red dots, I, I haven't noted down which one um, was the example. But I wasn't the only one to notice that. Um, I noticed it when I was looking for Sheila Nagik, so let's do that. Um, <laughs> because a lot of the Sheila Nagigs have been 3D scanned or have done photogrammetry done on them, and so you will find a model on Sketchfab. And sometimes they have on the Sites and Monuments record, it will say, see attached screenshot of Sketchfab. Of course, now I can't find one that is like that. And then there is no attachment. See here. For the original location, see blah, 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 CL, <laughs> JPEG attached, and there is no attachment. Um, and I know of archaeologists or people working with archaeologists that have sent in photographs and they're looking for their photographs and they're gone. There's also three dots down here, which you don't get if you have a smaller screen than mine because I've tried it on my laptop and I couldn't get to those three dots. And it you, you can pan to add marker or whatever, but you can also click on view attribute table. And then you get a bit more information down here. 
like the ITM coordinates and sometimes, but not always, the GPS coordinates. Which brings me to the next issue, is how imprecise the GPS coordinates are. So you can see here there are only two digits after the dot. There's probably a proper way of saying that, but I don't know. Um, and I noticed that in Quark, this should be it, yeah. So there are two, allegedly, in the public museum in Quark, which is seems to be this building here. So if I click on this one and go to the attribute table, um, it gives me all that information, object ID and all kinds of stuff that I'm not entirely sure what everything means. But you get, get the ITM coordinates and then you get the GPS coordinates. And as I said, there are only two digits after the dot. And if I used those in OpenStreetMap, copy that and paste that here and I have to put a comma in between. So remember, this is uh, south of the River Lee, right? If I search for this now, this is where it shows it. Okay, uh, here, you see the marker? That is certainly not south of the River Lee. And I find it especially annoying when there's a river between what you're looking for and where the what where it shows you the coordinates because you have to cross the river and there are only so many bridges and I tend to be on foot and if if I'm sent on a wild goose chase to here when I'm looking for the Sheila Nagig and I look around and it's some steps uh, down Blair's Hill I'd be super annoyed if I had relied on that and I discovered this, as I said, when I was looking for Sheila Nagigs because I was adding Sheila Nagigs to the Wiki Loves Monuments map. Um, and I used the coordinates from here because on Wiki you can do that. You can't use these coordinates on OpenStreetMap, of course, because the copyright license isn't open enough for OpenStreetMap because it's only share-like and we need the, um, the uh, zero DBL. Um, but if I looked for this Chilena gig on Wikidata now, um, I can use the Sites and Monuments records number for that, because I entered that into the Wikidata entry as well. So you get um, that information, and if you use the first coordinate information that I got from the Historic Environment Viewer, It'll show you what I just showed you up here, where it certainly isn't. That's why I added sourcing circumstances circa. And then uh, I added this one here, which I got from OpenStreetMap. The Sheila Nagigs aren't on OpenStreetMap, but the public museum is. So I used the coordinates for the public museum. Um, and that's the correct location. But if you look at the uh, Wiki Loves Monuments, Wiki Loves Monuments map now, today is the last day of the photo competition for this year. This is so, supposed to show you where you can find stuff that you can photograph for the competition. So the actual museum is here. And it probably took them from, from the correct locations. But if you have this on your phone or you're trying to, you know, do something on the weekend and you get this map out and say, okay, I'm just gonna photograph a couple of monuments and upload them to Wikimedia for other people to use. And you walk around and you can not find the thing you're looking for. And that, I think that could be very frustrating. So if they just used a couple more digits after the dot, it would be much more precise. I don't know, like, why they don't do that. And that's only for the ones that have 
GPS coordinates. A lot of them don't. But this brings us to the next problem. So I searched for, let's say, Shilina gigs, same with the Martello Towers. And I have, when I started the search, I have the, whatever this background layer is called, Map, no, it's not Map Genie, whatever, this satellite view. But for some reason, I want to change it to, let's say, the 25 inch Ordnance Survey map, especially with the Martello Towers, because if the location is clearly wrong, on satellite, maybe I want to check where it is mapped on the Ordnance Survey maps. So I could go up here to the layers and see my highlight is gone. It had highlighted all the Sheila gigs. And as soon as I click on the background layers, that highlight is gone. It's not lost. You can still click on the choose your background layer again, the new one. And then you have to click on the search again and that should bring it back, which is just is very inconvenient in my opinion. So that's another thing. I'll change to the Map Genie Standard ITM. What I also find, and that was an issue before, is that the, the maximum zoom level isn't high enough. Um, let's say you're looking at some graveyard or churchyard or whatever you want to call it. Let's say Callan. Let's find Callan. It's somewhere here. Yeah. Um, if you've ever been to a graveyard, you'll know that there are a lot of gravesto gravestones. And if you've ever been to like a monastic site, there's going to be grave slabs and chest tombs and effigies and architectural fragments all over the place. So you're going to get a lot of red dots if the person who was responsible for that county did their job right. Again, that differs from county to county. But let's say in Callan, St. Uh, Mary's Church of Ireland um, graveyard, the old, probably 12th century church, um, there are a lot of red dots. What they've also done, they've added labels to some of the dots now, which makes it all more difficult, I think, especially in a cluster like that. It was very useful when I was looking for the Sheila Nuggets. But in this case, um, it's just messy. And what I would wish is that they would allow at least two more zoom levels so the cluster gets less messy. You can you know better what you're clicking on. I mean, you still would have to have the red dots in the correct location, which isn't always the case. But I just wish that was a thing. And I think when they're close enough, um, you get still get one of three and then you have to click through and it might jump to the next one. I don't know if you saw that there. It'll jump to the next one. I just, just, I just don't think it's very user friendly. What I also found a bit annoying when I was looking for the Martello Towers is um, if you're searching for something like Martello Tower. Um, where do I clear my search? I don't know. There must be a way to clear the search. Maybe not. Let's say I want to search for Martello Towers anyway. Martello Towers, as I said, and that's probably not the case for a lot of features, maybe some houses that were castles before. Um, it's a very Martello Tower specific thing, I think. Um, is that they're on the Sites and Monuments record and on the National Inventory of Architectural Heritage. But if you wanted to show all Martello Towers, you can't do that in one search. Because you when you do search, you have to choose between the two. So either you, you, you search within the Sites and Monuments records and you search for Martello Tower. And that'll give you all the Martello Towers that are on the Sites and Monuments records, but that's not all of them. So you have to then go back to National Inventory of Architectural Heritage and start the search again for Martello Tower, which also gives you where they only have the battery or a Martello Tower and the battery. 
and you see there are two up in Donegal that we didn't have before. Um, this also brings me to the last positive feature, because it's good to finish on the positive note, isn't it? You can export these results now as a GeoJSON file, which I'm fairly sure you weren't able to do before. You could export as a CSV file, I know that because I've done that before. Obviously, a big warning, just don't export as a GeoJSON file because of the different copyright license between this map, which is share alike, and the copyright license that is required for OpenStreetMap. You cannot take anything from this map, any location from this map, and add it to OpenStreetMap. That would be so nice, but what you can do though, is let's say there are thousands of ring forts already mapped on OpenStreetMap because you can see them on satellite view and they're also on the British War Office map. Let's say you want to add the sites and monuments records number for all of them. To go to the sites and monuments records in the search and maybe search by county because there's going to be too many. Let's randomly choose Claire. And you want to add, as I said, all the ring forts. Um, uh, no matter whether they're casuals or rats and or unclassified. So you search for them. Might take a while because they're loads, I presume. Yeah, that is quite a few. And then you could export this as a GeoJSON file and import that into... Because the GeoJSON file will have the sites and monuments records number here, amongst other things. And only for the locations where the ring forts, oh, I didn't actually want to download, um, only for the locations that are already mapped on OpenStreetMap, you can take the sites and monuments records number and add it to that site. Do not copy locations from the historic environment viewer onto OpenStreetMap. Or check their license first, because if you watched it in five years and maybe they've changed the license, which I doubt, you might be able to do it. But don't go and add stuff from, um, just copy it from um, the historic environment map, map to OpenStreetMap. That would be illegal and would mess up OpenStreetMap. And we don't want that, of course. So that's... The last thing, well, they also have this new feature, which is probably not a great idea um, for ring forts. Let's go for Sheila Nadigs again. Um, I should probably not have just used the ones in clear. That did not work. How do I clear my search? Maybe if I just go back, yeah. So this is gonna look for Sheila and the Geeks nationwide. Quite a few, very few of them mapped on OpenStreetMap, by the way. Um, but what the, there's a feature here that I think some GIS person just had a bit of fun. I don't really think it's, it's very useful. But if you click on flash here, it makes them flash for a second or so. So you yeah, have a little bit of a sites and monuments records discotheque there. Woohoo! If anyone knows what, why this would be useful, please comment below. I'd be very interested. But um, yeah, there are loads of not mapped Sheila uh, gigs in OpenStreetMap. There are also quite a few mapped already, but not all of them. But I might do a video going into that coming up soon and, and why I looked them up on the Historic Environment Viewer. It's to do with Wikidata and stuff and 3D. Um, I might do that in the future. So thank you for being patient enough to make it to here and let me know what you think about the new Environment Viewer and you shall see me hopefully soon again in another video, a new one or if you browse my channel you might find something that piques your interest. Slangerful.